Hello, Earl Holzman here, and uh, I'm a nickel harpa builder, and I'm, this is the second video of a series on, uh, on sticking keys in one of my four-owed instruments. In this case, it's a soprano violin range instrument. In the first video, we talked about how to identify which keys are sticky, and we took the key box apart. So, in that first video, we identified that key, uh, the A string key number 12 um, was sticky. So um, now if, if we had sticky keys on any of the other strings, what I do is I, if, if they were bottom row keys with no other key guide strips in, I would find the key and put it in and uh, uh, test it. But I'm going to put the key box, um, two of the key guides back in because the bottom row is the G and this is the, the D string uh, key guide. And then we have the key guide for the A string keys. And... Uh, got a cordless screwdriver you can do this but be extremely cautious not to snug up the screw because if you snug it up too tight you can uh, damage the key guides and you don't want to do that so I will with the um, cordless screwdriver tighten the screw up most of the way but leave it such that I can still kind of snug it a little bit further and then I always back it off just a little so it's not tight. Now in the A string on this instrument there are actually 14 keys and so we identified key 12 as being a sticky key. So I come down to where I've got the keys all laid out and so this is one two so there's 10 keys in the in the bottom row so this is 11 this is 12 so this is key a 12 and there's actually a 12 on top of the key and because I don't have the, the top key guide in I can come in here and I can put this key in place now what I do is I rotate back up and I ask okay is it sticking from this side hmm, no it's not um, so if I take this other key guide and just set it on top and hold it in place oh it's sticking now so what I know is that it's sticking in the up and down direction on this side. When you bring the key in, if, if you look down here kind of close, you can see that it wiggles up and down a little bit and just a little bit side to side. And that's what you want is just a little bit. But in this case, it's expanded a little too much on this side so that it's causing a stickiness. So I need to remove just a little bit of material on the, on, on the top or bottom of the key down here. Um, what I tend to use is um, a small file. Uh, they sell these in sets of six of different shape at uh, big box hardware stores. Uh, I will sometimes use a larger file, which this is a um, what they call a flat bastard. Um, excuse me, pardon my French there, but that's the, the that's just what they call the file. Um, if you don't have files on hand, but you have a lady in the house who does her fingernails every once in a while, this is an, an emery board for um, filing your fingernails. Um, but you can use this to, uh, I will just lay against the table here, and I'm going to use this to come in and just sand a little bit on the bottom and a little bit on the top. Now, Having done that, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put it back into the key slot 12 and hold this on top. And I didn't take much off, but it was just enough to let the key move easily now. So now if you're looking at these keys, you'll notice there's some white stuff on here and that's Teflon powder and that's a lubricant. And so um, that's what I use to lubricate my keys. And, and the way I put, get the Teflon powder on is the product I use is this is a, uh, a dry lubricant that you can buy 
in any good hardware store or auto parts store or a big box lumber yard. Um, Liquid Wrench makes a version of this, and this is basically Teflon powder in a um, solution that will evaporate out. So what I do is I spray just a little bit into the cap, and then I've got one of these uh, cheap little paint brushes like kids use with uh, watercolor paints, and I dip that in, and I just brush a little bit of this on, and um, and if while you're at it you want to touch up the, the lubricant, uh, you can, and literally in just about two, you know, in a minute or two, that's just going to evaporate off and dry. And once it's done that, uh, we can put the key box back together. Now, this is an example of, of unsticking one key, and if you have a bunch of keys on, that are sticking on the in instrument, what you have to do is every key that you identified as sticky you go through and you pull out each individual key get it into its slot where you can work on it by itself here and check to see which end is sticking and then just remove a little bit of material on that end and after you've removed all that material relubricate and then you're ready to put things back together so we'll do that on the we'll put things back together on the next video thank you